Hello, everybody. Um, thank you. Yes, um, my name's Lynn Doyle. I'm the training manager for Neath Port Talbot Council, but I'm actually a member of the ACT um, working group um, that's um, working with the Care Council on producing the learning development plan for um, the Social Services and Wellbeing Wales Act. And I think I've heard a number of times today um, how people have said, oh, we're going to need um, people with the right skills, with the right capabilities, with the right experience, and it's all about training. So um, hopefully we've, um, we've, we've put some, started to put some plans in place to help address some of these. So in January 2015, I can't believe it was that long ago now, um, Welsh Government asked the Care Council if they would work with a number of partners um, to develop and implement the National Training and Development Plan uh, for the Act. And um, it was twofold, to develop the learning materials and provide the training to help deliver and roll out that training, but also to develop a learning um, and information hub on the Care Council website. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a, in a moment now. So there were two groups set up, the National Advisory Group, that's an all Wales group, and that consists of a very wide range of partners from local authorities, health board, voluntary <coughs> sectors, etc. And also the ACT Working Group, which consists of myself and um, a couple of other sort of regional training leads and a representative from um, the WCVA, and that's led by Sheila Lyons and the Care Council. So the first task we had to look at was there had been some previous work done on an awareness raising pack um, for the Act. Um, that needed to be rethought and um, rewritten, really, basically, to say it, <laughs> rewritten to um, better relate to what we were trying to get out in that awareness raising. Um, it also includes some um, sort of um, videos and films, and again, the e-learning e module is also available now on the Care Council Wales Hub. But it's also, um, and it, it took a little bit of work, this, and we talked today about sort of, you know, joining up information systems, and it's not quite as easy as it sounds, because we wanted something that was accessible for everybody. So eventually, we've now got that, that resource that sits on the um, All Wales Academy, <coughs> which is an a learn, e-learning platform for those of you perhaps who are familiar with it, but also, um, as well as importantly, is also now on the NHS learning platform. So we've got one resource that's consistent, you know, across a whole range of organisations to roll out the awareness raising. Um, we've, um, we, we started that in April and we've continued to roll out that, you know, that awareness uh, raising through, as I said, e-learning or via face-to-face -face sessions. We then produced a prospectus on what we thought were the core learning materials that were the next stage of training for the Act. And um, it was agreed then that the, the sort of four modules that would be written, parts uh, modules one to four, that cover the, the main parts of the Act around parts um, one and two, which are introduction and general functions, parts three and four, assessing and meeting need, part six, looked after children, and part seven, safeguarding. So um, we realised then that we would need some sort of external um, expertise, really, to write these materials. So we were quite busy, particularly through July and August, I, I, I should mention, um, working with external providers to produce these training materials. We went through an extensive tender exercise and um, this is to cover the writing of these three, um, sorry, four key modules. So following this tender process, in August of last year, we appointed IPC. And IPC have been very, very busy since then, um, working in, in partnership with us and other members to write these materials. So we've had a number of technical groups with leads from local authorities um, to get the materials right, because we had to start rolling them out in January this year. At the same time as writing the materials, we needed somebody to deliver the training. And unfortunately, we just didn't have the, the capacity of the number of internal trainers with this expertise to roll out the training to, we're talking about 20,000 people across Wales in, the, you know, in these core modules. So then we undertook another tender exercise to develop a framework of external trainers. 
So these people support, we do have a number of um, internal trainers that mainly consist of people within the training teams within social services across Wales, but also some of the, the team managers as well um, have been trained as within a, a sort of train the trainer. We've run three train the trainer programmes to date, and we currently have now about 200 people on this framework. Again, these are all available on the hub. So if anybody's not already accessing training through their local authority, then of course there's, an, there's another means to get it. Um, we've started the first cohort of training for people who were identified by the ADSS as being those people in key roles, such as those working with um, population assessments, information advice and assistance, that the frontline skills and the team member, team managers, sorry, and the social workers involved in um, assessment and eligibility. So we've, um, as I said, we've got the first cohort underway that has to be completed by the end of the month. Give you an example, we have about <coughs> 500 people in, in Western Bay, in my region, that will attend that training by the end of March. And they consist of both local authority and health colleagues as well. Um, we're also working currently on um, a module around Part 11, and that is specifically for those people working um, within prisons and secure units. We're, um, one of my sort of lead areas is a workbook and a film that's training for specifically for those people working in direct care. So the people working on the front lines who are, are out there day to day, home care, uh, residential care services, to get them to understand what the Act is all about and how those conversations are going to be different and how the service provision is, is very different. We're also working very closely on a project around um, direct payments and trying to promote the use of personal assistance to allow more flexibility and innovation. So that training has, has literally just started uh, um, this week um, as I speak. Um, another piece of work, we're obviously involved very closely with the SSIA and um, WLGA in the development of the population toolkit and training around that will be incorporated into the modules as it's developed. We're also working with um, SSIA on um, a particular leadership and development module for the Act. And I know my, my colleagues are here today from, from Gwent, and I believe they are piloting the first two workshops, which are around the sort of um, cultural um, shift that's needed with the Act, and the how, how are we going to measure progress, which we've talked again a, a lot about today. We've also um, undertaken a, another tender um, with an external supplier by the name of ICF, and they are going to complete a very comprehensive evaluation of the work that we've done so far. And that's about, you know, the outcomes. It's not just about the numbers of people that have uh, attended the training. It's about the so what. So what's the quality of the training content been? Has it made a difference? Um, and so forth. So, so that's underway, and that's through a number of face-to-face -face written um, various methods. So as I mentioned earlier, the Care Council Wales hub. Please have a look. It's under the banner of getting in on the act, um, and it's constantly updated with every new learning and development material that, that, that we deliver, develop, but also as well as other agencies. So anything around the regulations, Welsh <coughs> Government put on codes of practice, technical briefings, the, um, the toolkit for population assessment, news and bulletins. And if you, if you go on and have a look, there's a, a prospectus of learning materials. It, it looks like this. And this is updated daily. And it gives you an example of you know, what actually is available. And also, if anybody wants to um, access any of the training, um, the names of the contacts of the workforce leads will be available on, on the workforce, um, on, on the hub as well. Um, we're up to about a thousand views a day at the moment, which is really good news. So, so please, if you you know, help us promote the use of this as a one-stop shop. So this training plan um, for us is a, a two-year plan. Um, so in summary, year one really has seen us develop the, the wide range of training materials, um, develop and deliver. Um, sorry, develop, train the trainers, and deliver a number of training courses and said start producing the information um, and learning hub on the Care Council site. What we're trying to do now in year, in year two is trying to embed the, the learning and to build up the expertise. Um, I know Chris mentioned today a couple of um, master classes that are um, in preparation around particular outcomes, conversations, 
um, and how these are actually going to affect practice. And the information advice and assistance um, area is very important as well, um, that we get that conversation right. Um, I've, you know, I've already thought about a number of areas today that I think it's important that we commission in in response to the population assessment. That's going to be another training element that we are going to be looking at. But um, I think that um, linking the well-being um, outcomes, national outcomes framework within the Social Services Act, together with the, and I know my, um, my colleague told me today, I was calling it, lick it, but it's ICLIP, that the principles of the, um, of the Future Generations Act I think are really important because if you look at what Chris mentioned first thing this morning around the principles of the Social Services Act around prevention, co-production, well-being, outcomes, then against the principles of um, involvement, collaboration, long-term um, prevention, you know, they, they mean the same things. So I think perhaps we need to do a little bit more work um, in that area. And um, that's all for me. I think just to say that... Um, Lady mentioned World Book Day and um, today, and I missed my little granddaughter attending um, World Book Day today, dressed as Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. So I've been thinking about World Book Day, and I've decided mine is BFG. Thank you.